Okay, welcome back to Tiffle TV. Thanks for joining the Average Golfer. There is a bit of uh, cold mist there coming out of my mouth. It's still pretty damn cold here in the UK, but it ain't going to stop us in getting these reviews underway. And uh, interesting for me, it is uh, a little morning where I'm going to look at some Ben Ross product. Ben Ross, uh, UK manufacturer, uh, looked at their product range last year in all honesty first time I'd ever played Ben Ross clubs was last year and I was impressed with what they did um, two ranges last year irons um, and then through to hybrids and fairways uh, and driver and this year there's an update or um, an evolution even uh, and I'll get to that in a minute or two in the type r range i've got two clubs in my hand at the moment because we're going to use these for visuals very very shortly to explain what ben ross have done with their iron this year and how much it's changed we always talk about when you talk about ben ross we're talking about the cost and that's slightly and it annoys me a little bit i don't know if that annoys ben ross but really i think first and foremost what you've got to do is judge a product purely based on performance and then we can talk about the cost at uh, after that and how much how much value for money you get in a ben ross product but like i said first and foremost the club has got to stand on its own two feet and perform well enough so it is the ben ross evolution r iron I mentioned that just shortly and it's well, evolution is from the compressor type r iron now i'm going to put some close-ups for you now of these two irons because there's quite a big difference and evolution has changed quite considerably uh, or evolved quite a lot uh, in terms of the head shape which is really really interesting so i'm going to put these images up now and the first image you'll look at is the pure size of the club head this is a very, very small and compact club head in the Evolution R. You've not only got the small club head, you've got a slightly odd shape to it. And I've got to admit, when the, ball is, when the club is sat behind the ball, it's a bit odd to look at. It's unusual. It's a break from the norm. I've got no problem with that. I like to see innovation. I like to see changes. But I must admit, straight away, you're questioning... Um, the norm here, like I said, this is quite a bit different to look at for me. Um, from the top line, it's again, there's a slightly thicker top line. It's got on, it, it's odd in that it's a smaller face. It's a smaller in terms of the club face itself, but then it just seems a little bit chunky with this top line. Um, I've got to say the finish on the club again, very, very good indeed. No problems with that whatsoever, but I'm really interested in to, my query on this is where this product is aimed because to all intents and purposes for a size a, a profile a club head of, with that small profile that's a better player iron my immediate thoughts of ben ross's clubs has always been with no disrespect to them more of an in-game improvement type of iron so this is a change for me and i'm really interested to know how this has performed I know how it's performed out on the fairways because I've given it a few hits out there. We're going to get some dry ball data and then we'll do an assessment and see what I think of the uh, new Ben Ross Evolution R irons. Okay, so like I said, Ben Ross at address. It's, um, it's just a little bit different, but it's very, very compact. It's a very compact seven iron. That's what I'm going to hit. Check the line on that one. I thought so slightly down that left hand side. See if we can adjust that a little bit. Definitely back down the centre. I've caught the balls reasonably nice and uh, I don't know about the feel to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's I don't know if I'm finding the centre of the club, but it's quite, quite dull. It's an odd one because I'm really questioning every ball I've struck. If I could describe the feeling, it feels as I'm getting them slightly out the bottom. Um, it's almost a little bit thin and judging by where my strike pattern is it's very much down the bottom half of this very small club face um, 
I've hit all the balls fairly consistent in terms of their position I would think as well so very good in terms of uh, my uh, where I've struck and hit the ball in terms of the target line uh, at least we'll, we'll prove that in a minute or two um, but I'm not sure on the feel on this one like I said for me it was just as if I was just catching everything just a little bit out the bottom I'm really concerned about the size of this club head I'll be honest with you that's the big thing that I've got a problem with maybe it's a mental issue but they've really shrunk that down to a very small size and I just think in terms of confidence for the average golfer you're going to be a need to be a confident ball striker to be to be sitting that ball that club behind the ball uh, with some confidence anyway let's have a look at numbers and see how this uh, iron's done in terms of overall performance on dry ball data okay so that's me done with the seven iron from Ben Ross and uh, real interesting one this like I said it's uh, it, it, it's it's sort of messed with me mind a little bit in terms of straight away that this kind of the route that Ben Ross have taken and uh, obviously they know what they're doing they know what this product's aimed at but my uh, immediate thought was uh, like I said it's aimed very much at the better players market and they've changed the shape quite considerably and it's got to sort of it's got to appeal to your eye because it's sort of uh, such a unique profile that's my opinion on it and if I'm honest it doesn't quite appeal to mine uh, and I'm worried about that small uh, club head the size of the small club head because although when we're going to have a look at the numbers I hit this ball well in terms of what I've seen in terms of data and in terms of dispersion I hit it down the line I knew I was doing that but in terms of feel, I felt as I was getting out the bottom of the club. I didn't really ever seem to be finding the sweet spot. But the numbers suggest that I hit the ball more than well enough. So that's a bit of a concern for me. Um, so ball speed's pretty standard as where I'd expect them to be. Spin rate on this, um, again, it's a stronger lofted 30 degree 7 iron. Uh, spinning around on average 5,000 revs, which again for me, I'm a low spinner of the ball. Um, so that's again more than about right I would say um, carrying 158 again very very consistent in terms of performance and in terms of dispersion you've got to take your hat off to it 168 overall launching consistently again very very consistent numbers on launch at 18.5 uh, degrees um, although arguably for um, at 30 degrees aloft 18.5 it's not popping the ball high launching so that's uh, that is known to be a little bit lower my overall assessment is this this is a well-made product there is no two ways about it i think once again 400 odd quid or between four and five hundred pound for a full set of irons of this quality is good good value my issue is just how many players will get the performance uh, out of that golf club how many golfers are going to find a sweet spot of that golf club i don't know that's my only doubt i didn't feel like i found it but the numbers said i did so i have to tell it how it is that's the ben ross review of the uh, evolution r irons the important thing as ever is that you get out there and try them yourself my opinion is irrelevant it's a bit of a guide but no more than that so get out there try them yourself and uh, let me know how you get on in the meantime i'm going to jump straight into the driver um, Evolution R and I'm going to give you my assessment of that.